So before I engage with the paper, I do an A4 memorization uh, thing. So I've gone and memorized the organic summary page and I write down all the things that I can't remember um, and make sure I've memorized this before I do the exam. So going through this, um, just a, some exam technique. So uh, we're not just trying to get 100%, we're trying to get a very good 100% on this. Uh, and so when we read each question, we want to cross out the ones that we know are wrong. All right, so uh, in a chemical, chemical equation, equilibrium reversible arrow symbolizes that um, a forward reaction has stopped but can't be reversed. That can't be true because it's reversed. Uh, most of the uh, moles are equal. We know that that's not the case. It can be different ratios on either side and moved either side. Um, with temperature and things like that. Uh, half the reactants are being converted into the product, so it's got nothing to do with those, so that one's a fairly easy one. The concentration of reactants products remain constant. Um, yes, but um, coming reactants are becoming products at an equal rate. So that one is pretty easy. So moving to the next one. Now, this one is quite interesting because uh, there's two things that aren't in your data booklet. One is um, the value of Kw, and the other one is uh, the hydrogen ion concentration uh, is 10 to the minus pH. So that one's also pH plus um, pOH uh, equals 14, and hydrogen ion is uh, 10 to the minus pH. So um, those things you need to memorize because they're not there in the data booklet. So Going back to this one here, it crashed for some weird reason. Um, so hydrogen ion crisis 10 to the minus pH. So obviously it's got to be this one here and it can't be, it's, I don't know how you get those as destructors. I don't know how they came up with those. So next one, uh, 0.1 molar acidic, 100% dissociated. Solution excess electrical contour is twice that. Um, twice that mean, must mean there must be double the H2. Um, and so um, X must be a H2, and this must be just a H, uh, something like HCl or H2SO4, um, something like that, doesn't have to be that. Um, they've just made it easy by making them exactly that. Um, that one's a weak acid, so it can't be right. Um, this is just swapped the wrong way around. This one would actually work the other way around, and that one's got three, so can't be any of those. So make sure you cross them out as you go, uh, and you're confident that those three are wrong. That should um, help you help ensure that you get every one correct. Um, so we've got purple, um, and that's endothermic. So you're right, the heating over on this side, um, and it's in a sealed one liter container. Okay, so. Identify which change would, would shift from light purple to dark purple. So we're looking for shifts this way. Sorry, so that's going the other way to make it dark purple. All right, so adding this pushes it over there. That's fine. And in the catalyst, we'll just make it over and faster. Decreasing the temperature will push it over here to make it light purple. So that can't be right. Increasing the concentration of H2, again, is pushing it in the wrong direction. We're trying to make it more purple. So definitely A. Question five, um, if uh, for the reaction that must be above. So if you've forgotten what's what's what, just go to your data booklet. Um, it's quite generous, it even tells you the AB goes underneath, the CD goes on top. And so you can see that the H, H2 and I2 are on top. Uh, it's to the, it's, uh can't be to uh, two here has to be to the power of two so that's wrong um so all of this stuff is just weird you never see that it's always to the power of all right so moving on okay on to undergo the condensation reaction so it doesn't have to be water uh, for a condensation reaction it could be some other compounds going on um but we have options of molecules they're all acids and amines um, so would this work, uh, butanol, one, two, three, four, um, an amine, no, uh, it looks like it would cut off here, uh, maybe a carboxylic acid and an amine, uh, so 
that would be butanoic acid uh, plus uh, propanamine, which is this one. Uh, and so wouldn't be the alcohols because you've got a double bond O in there. Um, we've kind of worked out the H2O is the one that's coming out. Um, and could it be the other way around? Uh, no, because this one's got the four carbon chain and this one's got the three, not the reverse. Okay, question seven, uh, which is which is the largest potential when joined with the zinc. Um, so we've got magnesium, hydrogen, fluorine, and magnesium. So if we go to your data booklet, uh, we've got zinc. You know, they're all as long as they're all consistent. This is written in the opposite direction. As long as these are all consistent, we can write down those numbers, even though we probably should reverse the sign. Plus two point eight nine. All right, so this one here is the biggest difference to this one. Um, so maybe the signs are reversed, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be uh, the biggest difference. Question eight, which species is reduced? So you always do um, the groundwork here. Uh, so that's plus two to plus four that's being oxidized. Uh, this must be reduced, but let's see what the numbers are. Zero to minus one. So it's going down minus one. So that's the reduced. Um, so which species is being reduced? Bromine is getting reduced uh, to uh, bromide iron uh, and all the other species are obviously incorrect. Um, so this one that's screwed up because endpoint is the pH and the equivalence point is the volume. Uh, so that really should be endpoint and uh, 30 mils is, is the equivalence point, which is the correct stoichiometric ratio, but it shouldn't matter probably. Um, so a titration is when 60 mils of unknown monoprotic is titrated with 0.1. So maybe it's a HCL. Um, and so that would be 0 0.05 molar. Um, you can see there it's a strong base and a strong acid. Um, so compared to 0 0.1, the unknown, uh, Acid is uh, definitely dilute, uh, but not weak. It's dilute and strong. It's definitely concentrated or weak, um, more concentrated and strong. So uh, that's B, definitely. Um, determine the concentration, the acid was half. So we've already calculated that. Um, those destructors, well, it's probably a good destructor. I'm not sure about the other two, but it doesn't matter. Um, so let's moving on here. So always do your working. So um, haven't really looked at the question yet, and I'm just going to type that in. Um, and so what do we got? Ag plus goes to Ag here. Um, solid uh, and the reverse over there. I think that's good enough. Um, that's the cathode. A reduction occurs at the cathode. Um, Electrons. Okay, so determine the same is true. The spoon acts as the cathode. Yes, the silver electrode has a negative charge. Um, no, it's a positive one up there because um, that's electrons being forced down there and sucked up from there. Uh, the silver ions in solution are oxidized at the spoon. We already said reduction occurs at the cathode. Um, and the electrons flow from the spoon to the silver electrode, and we've already drawn that in this wrong place. So you can see doing um, the work, you know, I didn't do a full work, but I, I sort of did most of it. Um, we'll answer the questions as they come, no doubt the next one as well, no? All right, enzymes are classified as proteins. That's just a straight memorization. Um, there's not much we can do about that one. Probably shouldn't be in the test, that one. Um, Identify the reaction produced uh, to produce methanol, um, and that's transesterification. But what we're doing here is to produce methanol. So it is reversible and it's going in the other direction. So that's a little harder. Um, so normally we're going to learn transesterification is meth uh, methanol and triglycerides producing glycerol and this biodiesel here. Um, so does it fit? So quantification it can't be because that will be, these will be negative and they'll be um, salts uh, with the polar and nonpolar part to it. 
So it's definitely not that. Um, oxidation, it's a nasty one. Um, I have to kind of work out whether there's, um, it's really just uh, water coming out of these things. Uh, so this section here uh, is breaking off. The CH here is turning to CH3. So it's technically that's gaining a hydrogen. Uh, so that's being reduced. Uh, thank God reduction's not in there. Um, and so it can't be substitution either because something has been added. Uh, if they put reduction in here, um, I would still have to, hopefully they'll take both as correct, but I'll go for transesterification as the more specific one that refers to normally the reverse of this, methanol plus triglycerides get by diesel plus uh, glycerol uh, with KOH and a base. So that one is a tricky one. Question 14, which molecule has the lowest boiling point? Thank goodness they're all the same. Um, so that one's four and six and five and three. So that one's the lowest. Uh, so we'll have the smallest number of London dispersion forces, um, the smallest chain. Uh, they'll all have dipole dipole because they've got a double bond in there, but uh, this factor is the one that's going to get decreased. And so that will have the lowest boiling point. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, buffer consisting of uh, this, where is it here? Uh, and then it, it can dissociate further. Okay, so uh, predict how the solution of this would react. So this system here, when a small amount of HCl goes in. So if a small amount of HCl goes in, that's going to boost uh, that thing here and it'll shift over to the left-hand side. So equilibrium is to the right, no. Um, equilibrium is to the left, um, CO3 uh, increases, um, unlikely. Um, let's deal with that a bit later. Equilibrium is to the left and this increases. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, equilibrium is to the right. We already know that's not right. So. H plus does increase and then that will push this tier to this and because that ink decreases that will decrease uh, and so CO3 2 plus does actually decrease uh, so we can definitely confirm B is not correct. Um, if B was decreased um, that's a good question. If B and C were both correct, hopefully that gets picked up. Both will be accepted if that said decreased. And they stuff that up. All right, question 16. Halogen alkanes undergo a substitution reaction with cyanide. Um, so amines need an NH3 plus added to them. Um, you can't add a nitrogen and have um, this. It has to be one of these functional groups that have a nitrogen in them. Uh, and you've memorized your reactions page. Uh, so I'm just going to take it from that, that you know it. And that's um, the reactions page that I would expect you to learn with that bit there. Question 17 now, again, with the reactions page, um, carboxylic plus alcohol um, goes to an ester. Ketones, that's oxidation alcohols. Well, I don't know how we do that. Aldehyde. Uh, Oxidation alcohols again. So one's a primary, this one's a second, secondary primary alcohols. All right. Um, identify the reaction used. Um, identify the reaction used to produce X. Um, so it's an esterification. Um, is acceptable. This water comes off as a condensation. Um, it's definitely not adding water. It's taking water away. Um, and there's no addition of things, it's losing things. It's not hydrogenation because that's adding to the double bond a, a halogen, so um, that one can't be correct either. Okay, question 19, identify the polymer shown. So you remove those bonds and add that in there. Um, and so that is uh, propene, oh sorry, identify the polymer, the monomer. Uh, so it's, pro it's propene, polypropene. Uh, polypeptides and amino acid, there's no amino acid in there, there's no carboxylic and amine group. Polyethene wouldn't have this side group. 
uh, polysaccharide, there's no glucoses, which are these six carbon complicated sugars. So hopefully that should be considered as an easy one. Uh, structural form of polypeptide is shown, identify three amino acids. So you're looking for a carbon with a H, some sort of R group, and one of these um, carboxylic acid groups and amino groups. Uh, and so the combination of this um, uh, this group here, the, the water comes off, uh, the water comes, this loses one here to become an NH and uh, a carbon. So that's the peptide bond we're looking for. Uh, so you can see a peptide bond possibly here and here. Um, maybe they're distractors. Um, there's a carbon there, so that looks like the R group here. Um, the carbon looks like here. So that looks like the other R group. Um, and the carbon here. Um, so that looks like the other R group. Okay. So um, we can look for an SH group, um, a carboxylic acid group. Um, so let's have a look for that one there. Uh, it looks like cysteine is it, and we don't even have to worry about it. So let's just write, write that one off. Um, so that one was this one here. So now that we're looking for looking for a carboxyl, an extra carboxylic acid group. So something with a second carboxylic acid group would be down here. Now there's the cysteine. CH2 carboxylic acid, aspartame. So, yeah, there is an extra CH2 carboxylic acid, so it definitely is aspartame. Um, instead of just seeing that these are wrong, let's just confirm alanine has um, a plain carb extra carboxylic uh, alanine. Looks like it just has a CH3 here and then a H. So if alanine has just a CH3 as its R group, that was not the R group. My apologies. Then, uh, so that's a nice tricky one. Then we are all good because uh, they made both ends look the same, which they're not normally. Um, alanine, yeah, has a CH3. So I think that's enough confirmation to say that B is correct um, and without having to check all these ones out, which is time consuming. All right, um, that's a nice one. I like how they put that there to confuse everyone because it's actually an R group and making it look as if it's one of the um, which one of the carboxylic acid groups, which is not, it's a second carboxylic acid group, mostly R. Okay, so I hope that's helpful.